We won the election. And we'll prove it to Nigeria in one year. Yes, there is insurmountable evidence that P2B and the Labour Party won the presidential election. But Einek erroneously declared Bola Ahmed Tinubu as the winner based on forged, altered, manipulated results. And knowing the kind of person P2B is, he will not say what he's not sure of. No, he has never done that. Many people that are in the know have said that the Labour Party won 16 states and got the required 25% in more than 24 states across the country, including Abuja. So there is no way they didn't win this election. Nobody else did. They didn't come third, neither did they come second. They came first. So rejoice, people. The mandate can only be delayed. It can be denied. More on that later. Now to River State. Look at this chart. It seems like Wike actually set up APC and Tinubu instead of the other way around. As you can see, this is from INEX servers. They are now uploading the correct results. And looking at these words in Obi Apoloku government, Rumo Koro, Rumo Masi, you can see the tally of votes that Labour Party got. Unlike the more than 80,000 votes that APC got in the results announced by INEC. Anyway, hang on, there will be more detailed analysis of what happened in River State, how they doctored the results, how they manipulated and altered the result sheets. Now, let's see what P2B and the Labour Party will be asking the tribunal when they get there. They will be asking them to declare him the rightful winner of the presidential election because he polled the highest number of votes and they also made the required 25% in two-thirds of the states in Nigeria. This, as you already know, they have the proof. They will present them. Yes, there have been lack of trust of the judiciary lately, most especially because of Ahmad Lawan, who contested the presidential primaries of the APC. According to the Electoral Act, no one should contest two primaries in an election season. Nevertheless, he was still able to go back to his home state of Yobe and got elected as a senator, which is practically impossible, according to the Electoral Act 2022. So because of this alone, many people have serious doubt about the judiciary in upholding the law. There was also the case of Hope Uzodema, the current governor of Imo State, who finished fourth in the election in 2020, but the Supreme Court said he won the election. They somehow disqualified the first, the second, the third person and made the person that finished fourth the winner of the election. The judges that passed that judgment are currently facing the consequences. They have been banned from entering the United States. This was revealed by Donald Duke recently, where they demanded for visa to go to the United States for judges' conference, but they were denied visa. The United States have said that they will continue to deny visas to people who harm democracy, who their actions, whatever they have done during elections or any other time, that harms the growth of democracy in Nigeria, they will continue to deny them visa. And hopefully, they will extend this measure to their allies in Western Europe so that all these judges that want to take bribes from politicians to rule in their favor will think twice before doing such actions in the future. Anyway, the data that Labour Party have collected is too staggering that no judge will see that and not want to rule based on facts instead of going on technicalities. Also, it is expected that thousands of Labour Party supporters will be going to the tribunal when the hearing starts. One more thing to know about Peter B's resolve, this is not the first time he has experienced this kind of thing. When his mandate was stolen back in 2003 and he went to court to challenge it, at the time, he got many offers from party members, even priests were telling him to drop the matter that Chris Ngige was performing in office. He used one analogy to reply one priest in Onesha. He told him, so the fact that a thief stole your vehicle and is now maintaining the car, driving it is clean always, he washes it every day, because of it, you will forget the car and even forgive the thief, that it doesn't make any difference. Whether the thief maintains your car or not, that is still a thief and he still stole your car. That was the analogy he used. So this time around, be sure that his resolve is not going to back down. He must reach the final conclusion without cutting corners, without you know bribing anybody. When you see the facts, 
judges will really be be afraid of taking money from anyone. And I've maintained so consistently that if you must answer His Excellency, the process through which you arrive to office must be excellent. Now, let's look at some of the evidence that P2B and the Labour Party will be taking to court to reclaim their mandate. First is the fact that INEC made it impossible to upload presidential election results, but surprisingly, uploading of legislative election results worked in some cases. This is a breach of the electoral law, which states that the electronic transmission of results is a requirement and obligatory, not optional, in this election. It is mandatory. You can see it here. INEC posted it. Sections 50, 60, and 64 of the Electoral Act 2022. Even the INEC chairman, Yakubu, said it himself in this video. Most Nigerians are more familiar with the bimodal voter accreditation system, the BIVAS, which doubles as accreditation device, as well as the upload of polling unit level result sheets on election day on or to the IREV INEC result viewing portal, the IREV, in real time. These innovations have increased transparency and public confidence in the electoral process. They are also part of the legal requirements for conducting elections in Nigeria. INEC intentionally broke the law by preventing the upload of presidential election results. Immediately vote counting finished at the polling unit which gave room for manipulation and alteration of the results. The APC and PDP guys used this loophole to write and fabricate figures, sort of vote allocation. One example of the PDP fraudulently allocating Labour Party votes to themselves is this result from Woji in Obio, a local government area in River State. You can see that Labour Party scored 273 votes on the original result. PDP scored only 4 votes, while APC scored 8 votes. Now, let's look at the rigged result. You can see that they deducted votes from Labour Party, who originally scored 273 votes. They cancelled the votes and allocated 30 to them. Now, the PDP, who originally scored 4 votes, now has 243 votes. It was a feast. The PDP and the APC guys deducted votes from the Labour Party. This is the same local government area where Tinubu got 80,000 votes. It's unbelievable. All the original polling unit results we've seen, there's none that APC won. Look at this shocker. Collation of results from a ward in Obia local government. By the way, it has 17 wards in total. In this Oroigwe ward, Labour Party scored 4,648 votes and APC scored 1,297 votes. Compare that to the final result in the entire LGA, 80,239 votes. And they allocated 3,829 votes to the Labour Party. So in just one ward out of 17 wards in Obia local government area, Labour Party have scored more than the total votes allocated to it in the local government area. There's another shocker. In Ward 13, Labour Party scored 6,727 votes and APC scored only 429 votes in the original results. So where did they get the 80,000 votes from? Wike obviously went way too overboard. Even Tinubu and APC guys will be surprised that he pushed for a win instead of just getting the required 25%. You don't rig this heavy in a place where you are not popular. Even in Lagos that Tinubu is more popular, he still lost the state to Labour. While AP supporters might be using that for argument's sake that the election was free and fair, that APC lost Lagos, blah blah blah. No, there's a difference. The difference is that people who voted for Tinubu are not shouting and asking why and how Labour Party won in Lagos. Because they know that they won squarely. Unlike in River State, where everyone is shouting that they didn't vote for Tinubu, how come, how did he win River State? The Yaga Africa report attests to this. They monitored many polling units in River State. There are many polling units that APC scored zero, unlike Labour Party. In some of the doctor results, you will see extensive alterations. 
which proves that something else was going on, not mistakes by the electoral officer. In some cases, they ran out of result sheets and used ones from other regions, like the one they uploaded a result sheet from Nasarawa in a polling unit in Lekki, Lagos. So it's obvious that this election was a sham, and the international press are saying it as it is. The BBC, CNN, Financial Times, and European international magazines. Many observers saw what happened. They saw the intimidation, the snatching of ballot boxes. They saw thugs being aided by the police in broad daylight. So nothing was hidden, and all these were caught on camera. Going forward, everyone should endeavor to come out on election day, March 11th, to vote in the governorship and state assembly elections. Don't let what happened dampen your spirit or discourage you. In fact, it should be a motivation. Take your anger to the polling unit. Don't let them get away with it. The governorship election is equally important because the governor you elect in your state is the person that is going to construct the road in front of your house, in your community, in your villages. So make sure to come out and vote. People who didn't vote the last time should make sure they join others this time around. Come out and mass and make sure you vote. After voting, hang around and gather evidence with your phone. Make sure they count the results in your presence. Whether the upload works this time around or not, if you have the photo of the result and video of the counting of votes like many captured the last time, that's enough evidence to reclaim the mandate in court if it's stolen again. Thanks for watching. Ah!